And that's why I go so hard for the animals, because animals is what saved my life wow. without even knowing. You know, I knew, I knew they'd bring me happiness my whole life. But when I was in my darkest place in my life, that I didn't care or love myself or anybody. They loved me. All right, welcome back in one of the School of Greatness podcasts. We've got the real Tarzan in the house. Mike Holston, good to see you. Yes, man. sir, brother. Thank you for <laughs> having me. Thank you for being here, man. So much fun. You've been um, you've been taken off over the last month. I found out about you from Will Smith, and then it seems like everyone's been talking about you. Thank you, Will. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And um, you are just like taking over the world with educating us about animals, all types of animals. Yeah, man. From domestic animals to the wildest exotic animals to uh, reptiles to snakes, spiders. Elephants, anything in between, you, if it's an animal and breathing and walking and moving, you love it. Absolutely. And when did you get into this like passion for just all types of animals? Honestly, I was born with animals, you know, like not born with animals, but, you know, my, there was already a, uh, two dogs in my family, you know, when I was born in my family. So I grew up with two dogs, you know, had no siblings. So those were like my best friends. Really? Yeah. I had, I had Only a, child? Yeah. Well, not, I was at the time, you, the time, yeah. you know, but I'm, I'm the oldest of 10. Wow. Yeah. I have Ten? a big family. Brothers and sisters? Brothers and sisters. I was going to say like nine animals or something. <laughs> no. <laughs> animals is way deeper than that. You're the oldest of ten. Oldest of ten. Wow. And what for, is that like? It's just the best feeling, man. You know, like, me, me and my, my siblings were real close growing up. So it's just like, I always had that brotherhood, that sisterhood, and I had a bunch of cousins. But there's nothing like having your brothers and sisters, you know? Wow. Man. I love them tremendously. You and you know? grew up in Rhode Island? Yep. Well, I bounced back from Rhode Island and Atlanta for most of my life because my dad lived in Rhode Island, my mom lived in Atlanta, so holidays, my birthday, or I was over there, and then I would go, you know, I would be in school in Atlanta, living my life with my mom, my two brothers, and the rest of my family was up north. Yeah. So every holiday, any break we had, we was we was home. Yeah. Four, five, six times a year, you know. And you had a couple dogs growing up. Did you, when did you really start to explore out? And I got my first snake at four. Uh -huh. Four turned to five. What kind of snake? I had a boa snake? constrictor. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've caught snakes, you know, like garter snakes and, uh, you know, decay snakes and rough green snakes, you know, growing up, but I never actually had one as a pet. So you would catch them? Yeah, and I'll, I'll bring them home. Mom's like, what the fuck are you doing with these? <laughs> like, so I just kept begging and begging and begging. You had four, got a boa constrictor. Yep. Was it like a yellow one? Like a it was a regular Columbia red tail. Had like a tannish, you know, brownish body with a red tail, you know, with with dark brown straddles on top of him, but he was evil, bro. Really? He was mean. Bite yeah. you a lot? Yeah, he what? bit me a lot. Really? I didn't know a lot. You know, all I saw was TV stuff, you know. Um, I had... You saw Steve Irwin? Yeah, when you did, know. When did you first see him or see his... Well, I actually first saw um, the old school Tarzan movies first. My, my, my grandma is an older lady. She passed away a couple years ago, but, you know, 70-year-old lady was sitting in her big, huge chair every day and watched this black and white TV. And I loved my grandma and dad. Every time I came, we lived in the same house. So my dad lived on the first floor, and then my grandma lived on the second, my great grandma lived on the second floor, and then my grandma lived on the third floor. You know, so I was always up and down, hanging out with my family every day. So when I go see my, my grandma, she would watch these stupid old movies with black and white. And I'm like, dude, this is so boring. <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to watch this. And then one day, she had a uh, old school, like 1950s Tarzan movie on, black and white, horrible, you know, like, I look at it now, I'm like, dude, this is so bad, but yeah. back in the day, as a kid, I was like, yo, this is amazing, Yeah. you know? And Swinging they, a little rope, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, fighting cheetahs and lions in the jungle with a, you know, chilt on, I was like, yeah. dude, this guy's amazing. And then um, I got a lot of stuffed animals after that, and then I thought, but I knew it was off, you know, I knew Tarzan was a fake movie, and my stuffed animals weren't real. So when I finally got my snake, you know, I thought it was going to be a, a walk in the park, and it wasn't, you know, because he was, he was mean. But that's when I started watching Steve Irwin, and then I went from a, looking at something that was fake to looking at a real person. Who was really I was really doing this stuff, yeah. exactly. You know, it wasn't How a cartoon. Old um, I had to be, I mean, anywhere from five, to six, seven years old, yeah. you know. Probably, probably younger or older, I can't remember. But, um, you know, from watching PBS Kids and Zabumafu and National Geographic Channel and David Attenborough and 
Animal Planet, you know, you name it. Dude, I was engulfed in animals every day of my life, wow. you know, from a kid up until this day, you know, and it's just, it stuck with me. Really? Yeah. Like, once I love something or like something, you're I don't, all I'm yeah. all in. Like, I eat the same food over and oh, over. Me too, man. I eat you the know. same restaurant like every three it, days. Dude, man. it's like, it's, it, how can you get bored of something you love? I know. It's I like you, clockwork, man. you know? So you had the snake at four, mm -hmm. four or five. How long did you have this mean snake for? And did you ever get a place where you were like able to tame it? Or? Yeah. Well, I think he bit me, my brother, my aunt, my mom, and my uncle. And they would get, they were, they were like literally days away from getting rid of him. And uh, I kept going there, you know. I was nervous as a little kid, yeah. you know, I but I was person. like, this is my snake. I had to conquer this fear, you know, and I, every time we go to hang up, like handle this snake, everybody's walking away with tears or blood. And I'm just oh like, dude, gosh. this is just horrible. And one day I picked him up and he didn't bite me. I was like, we're best friends. <laughs> really? And then. But isn't it scary to like have something that's biting you to like put it up next to your face? And yeah, it's a, it takes time to do that, you know? Right in your eyeballs and yeah. like. It takes time, man, you know, like. So you don't want to just pick it up and be like, oh, hey, snake. Oh, yeah, no, not, not at, the, at the beginning. Uh -huh. You got you to gotta, you gotta basically make him trust, you know, trust him. You have to trust him. You not, have to trust the snake. Exactly. How and how crazy is that? It's biting you. Exactly. Once you, when you're nervous, you're scared, you can't trust them. They have, like, a, a defense the same way with you. If you were walking down the street and some guy came to you and he's like, hey, what's up, buddy? You're going to be like, yo, bro, I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to run away or call the cops. But if someone walk, approaches you and says, hey, how you doing, shakes your hand and keeps it moving, it's a, it's a harmless, it's more, calm. it's more calm, you know? So when you walk up, you know, with a snake and you're like, oh, man, am I going to grab it? He's like, yo, bro, are you trying to eat me? Are you, you trying doing? to fight me? Yeah. Like, I'm going to bite you just to get away from me because they're more scared of us than, you know, we are of them. But if you walk up to a snake and you're like, hey, buddy, what's up? How's it going? He's like, bro, oh, all right, cool. We're just chilling. Versus, you know, you're going here and you're like, oh. You know, you're trying to grab him, the snake's looking at you, you're looking at him, you know, it's just... But versus, if you, if you literally do this, that's it. Calm. Calm. Easier you you become a tree branch right. versus something trying to eat you. Oh. You know, you're just a harmless figure. But wouldn't Steve Irwin be like that? Like on the TV Of course, show? there's oh, different snakes. Yeah, yeah, Crikey. absolutely. You know, you know, you gotta bring the viewers in. Yeah, right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, it's just, everything's like, it's like ballet, you know? You, you ballet with this snake and then if you got a break dance, then you got a break dance, of course, mm, you know, but right. it's all just simple, slow motions of trust. And if he's moving, you move with him and he moves this way, you move that way. It's the same thing with like a dog, you exactly. know, I feel, like, I feel like I do really well around dogs. Like a lot of people who are dog owners are like, yeah, they don't really like big guys, right? Yeah. Or they get like skittish around big guys, but I'll just like kneel mm -hmm. and, like, and like just put my hand out calm. Get down to your level, and you know. And let them come to me and then they like start sniffing me and like start like putting their head on me and it's just like, all right, start picking Yeah, best friends, just like that. Yeah, and they're, they're, these people are always like, oh, they never do that with strangers or whatever. I'm like, well, I'm just trying to be calm and relaxed. Yeah, everybody's so nervous and scared of people's dogs. That's why they freak yeah. out when they get to their, their houses. See, if it was a 30-foot boa constrictor, I might be, <laughs> I might not be like, hey, little snake, like, I may be like, uh, touch the tail. For yeah, a for sure. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Okay, so you conquered the fear of your first snake that bit you. Mm -hmm. Did the snake bite you again after this? I'm pretty sure he did. Probably like um, but it was just, I was so happy, you know, that <laughs> I finally got to, you know, even interact with this animal. It was right. just, we, we, I didn't even care after that, you know. I just kept duplicating the same thing and doing more less research. Less, probably, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Really? You so know, researching so. about snakes in general or about all snakes? Well, boa constrictors. You know, at first I started doing, I just wanted a snake. You know, because I was just so young and yeah. naive about it. But I finally realized there's thousands and thousands of different species of snakes that get bigger and smaller and different colors and different places. They live in trees, live on the ground, live under water. It's just like it, when I when I figured that out that there was so many more than just you know okay, pythons yeah. and boas. I was literally like, oh my god, I'm freaked out, freaked out, bro. You know, imagine I don't even imagine having your favorite food, right? And you ate it your whole life. And then one day you found out that food had millions of options that tasted just like that, but better. Mm. You know, you're like, dude. Sounds amazing. It's like, a, it's like an endless <laughs> buffet of greatness. Oh, my gosh. You know, so when I, when I finally figured out at a young age that there was like thousands of different species of snakes, even the same species, you know, like a boa constrictor has seven or eight or nine or ten different species inside just a boa constrictor of that country. And then you go to another country that got different ones, and then another country got different ones. But they're still boas. They look different, they have different patterns, some get bigger, have different head shapes. It's literally so interesting. 
you know? Wow. Some are more aggressive than others, some are calmer than others. And that's what really, you know, intrigues me. And I'm like, dude, if I could learn this about snakes, how many other animals? And it's like that with every single species. That's why I'm addicted to all animals, because I love to learn. And you can, you can never stop. You can I mean, never there's stop. so many things you can learn. Yeah, bro, like, literally. You probably know, like, 20% of. Not, bro, 20, no, I don't even know, like, 4%. Not wow. even, I don't even know if I know 1%. There's that's that just my animals. opinion. Yeah, to, the, yeah. to the outside world, I'm a genius. You know a little bit about yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, you know, but, but you to yet. me, I'm a student to the game always yeah. you know like i love to learn i'm an open book so when i get around different people like you know i was at caesar milan a few days ago mm -hmm. he's been on the show yeah he's an Great awesome guy, guy. you Great know guy. i looked up to caesar milan you know for a long like a long time you know you went and, to his dog psychology center. yeah i went yeah. to dog psychology center and i again i told you i was raised with dogs you know so i trained dogs and worked with dogs my whole life but the moment i got with caesar i'm a i have no fucking clue what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> Teach me. That's how I am. I'm like, yeah. give me all you got. What was he, the greatest thing he taught you the other how day? To, how, to, how, how to sit, how to make a dog sit. I've been doing it wrong this whole time. I've been doing a great job to my, for myself, you know, but like, he, he explained stuff to me and I'm like, holy shit, dude, that's real. Like, Wait, how do you do it? So, what do you do? What do, you, what do, you, what do you, when you tell a dog to sit, what do you do? Sit? Yeah, right. But it's more about the energy, right? It's more Not like even, bro. He explained this to me. It's so freaking cool. It makes total sense because it's applied in other animals too. You know, but when a dog is born, they have the nose, their eyes, and then their hearing. So they're born blind, they're born deaf, but they can smell. So the yeah. first thing they can do is they can smell first. So that's their first natural instinct mm. is to smell. And then like a few weeks later, they open their eyes, they can see, yeah, start and, hearing then, and then they can yeah. start hearing. So when you go to teach them, you don't teach them through, through here, you teach them through here, and then here, and then there. Mm. because once this goes, everything else goes because this is instinct number one. How do you teach them through the nose? You know, treat, smell, you know, attention, stuff like that. You know, and it, it, I'm, I'm still learning because I just learned a few days ago. Right. So, you know, I'm going over the process of watching all his new stuff and wow, like, okay, man. this is how he does it. So when I go home, I can train my dogs totally different now because now, again, I'm a new book. You know, everything I did know about that I thought I knew, it's now old book and yeah. I have a new book so one day when I get around another dog guru from another country for somewhere else I can completely erase put that book on the shelf and they'll go learn something new again yeah you know so wow. one day when I can give out information I say oh here's three books I learned this and I learned sure, that I learned sure. that so here's your methods of wow. you know that's how I like to reiterate things become a, I basically become a sponge yeah of course you know how many animals do you have right now personally 41 what are they? I have three dogs. Have, is this in Miami or is this? It's in, in Miami, yeah. yeah. Okay, three dogs. I have a fox. A fox. American red fox. Like, like a wild fox or like? Like a, a fox, like you it's know. Tame now, it's like. He will. I, 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 a lot of animals I have, like ninety-five percent of the animals I have, are like rescues. Mm -hmm. You know, besides my dogs, the dogs gave it to me for free from people from Instagram, but um, it's like. I worked at a reptile store back in the day. And then they uh, sold animals, of course, to the public. And I'm in, I'm into the animal education and conservation space. You know, I really don't care so much for selling animals. Yeah. I don't have a problem with people having animals as pets, as long as they have the, you know, the proper, you know, education and stuff in captivity to, to duplicate their enrichment in natural environments. Yeah. But um, my fox was a rescue, and I raised him with my pit bull. No way. Yeah. It was like a baby fox. Yeah, they're like both the same age. Seven. I think the fox was like eight weeks old. And my dog was like seven and a half weeks old. You raise it together. So I have a 100 pound pit bull that looks vicious. He's sweet as can sweet. be. Sweet, like the calmest. And then I have this fox and they're best friends. Shut up. So and it, then now the, the fox like the, bites listen, you it gets better. Like, no, the fox is completely like tame. Like, Even though never bit me ever. Never bit anybody. What? Even but though it's, it's like it's that in socialization its DNA is like the more aggressive. It, you, not even more aggressive. You gotta think. You know, in the wild, they're like at the bottom not the bottom of the food chain, but they're like, they get killed by cars, right. hawks, you know, so if they're small enough, snakes eat them in different places, cougars, jag you know, I mean, not jaguars, but uh, coyotes, yeah. um, bobcats, they battle with all, with all these animals for territory, you know, so in the wild, people are like, oh, a fox is aggressive, it's like, no, he's just defending himself, you know, he has a lot of problems out here, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but the cool thing is, he was such a, he was so young, and my dog was so young, they, they bond together, so my dog loves me, Fox is like, okay, I can trust this guy. 
I love him too. Wow. So my dog was, you know, a lot of people, that's why I love pit bulls so much. People just, pit they're pit so pit. underrated. You know, people think they're so vicious, but they actually are the best dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, I they live it. to please you. Gosh, I love it. You know, and whatever you do and whatever you tell them to do, whatever you teach them, they're going to do it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I just teach love, kindness, happiness, patience with this giant dog. And he has love, kindness, and patience with everything and everybody. You know, even a fox and a lizard and a baby monkey. You know, <laughs> that he could easily eat in one bite. He just, he loves it. No way. Yeah, I got, you know, he's 100, he's... I brought him to the vet. He was like 88, not like 90 pounds. He's only like eight months old. Oh my gosh. So I got puppies, you know, like little, like 15 pound puppy pit bulls. You know, he got his time. I'm like, dude, this is gonna be, a, I gotta watch him, you know? Is he calm? Dude, he's just the best big brother ever. Wow. Just, see, see how the monkey is. The monkey play with the dog and the fox. fox plays with the dog. The fox doesn't eat the monkey? No. Well, the fox doesn't go next to the monkey. No. There's just certain, <laughs> certain things. There's certain cause... things you can. Put together and try. If I grew them up from babies, of course, but I can't. Otherwise, I would kill probably. Yeah, you know, and then you don't want to stress the animals out by trying to. They're not supposed to be together anyway. You yeah. know, it's just sometimes it happens just naturally. I know I have a friend that has um, the dog just passed away like a couple months ago, but for ten years this guy raised a Saint Bernard with an adult male lion. No, I got video and picture. Did it start as a baby lion? They both started together. And then they would just like lay with each other and hang out. Best of friends. This 600 pound adult lion. lion has a little 60 pound St. Bernard. That's the best friend. And actually, the St. Bernard was older, like by a few weeks, so he was more dominant than the lion. No way. I swear. They would get in fights, and then the St. Bernard would win every time. What? Because the, 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 he would back down, you know, it's his brother. Oh my gosh. Even though he was bigger? That's crazy, man. Yep, and it, when I remember my friend was telling me because they were so close for 10 years together. That's you know, sad. that's like literally every single day of his life, he's, he had this, this dog. Oh, that's sad. You know, so. How long said, does a lion live for? A lion can live like 20, 30 years. Wow. You know, so, I mean, in a while they don't last long, but it's they been lions in captivity that last, lasted about 20 years, and, and of course more. So what other animals do you have? You got fox, I got a goat. goat. I, I got an Arabian dwarf mountain goat that just rescued from like a little, uh, cattle farm where they're gonna eat him. So I got him, and he's like actually the best pet I have. <laughs> he's the best. Why? He's recently, he's new to the family. He's just so, you, you never think a goat would be just so loving and you think dogs are affectionate? Dude, this goat wasn't leaving my side, no bro. No way, dude. Dude, he's the cutest, he's like this big. What? Yeah. Baby he, goat? Baby goat. You know, he drinks whole milk. You know, I'm, I'm not whole, I'm feeding him, you know, Giving him some milk because he's still a baby. He's only four weeks old. Oh wow! You know, and he has just the best personality ever, dude. Okay. He has like these little horns that's growing in because he's a baby. You know, he he just headbutts you a little bit. He's just the cutest thing. He's gonna grow big though, huh? No, he'll be small. He'll be like 15 inches high. Okay, so you get goat. What else you got? I got a slew of snakes Snake, and lizards, and things, huh? I just got a bunch of spiders in recently and scorpions. Tarantulas. Yeah. I saw a video of you with holding a bunch of scorpions and letting them pinch you or something. It's like, aren't they venomous or See, what? See, people don't know, man. You know, there's... A little... I feel like I would to hold those things, man. Yeah, they're, they're just... All, they're, they're like, they're harmless. What? Not all scorpions, but okay. that Certain, species. That yeah. species. And that's where I go back to with the snake stuff, you know. It's like, when I finally figured out that there were so many different species of snakes, some had different characteristics and personalities, some were super aggressive, some were super chill. Same with scorpions, you know, you think of scorpion like, oh man, this thing's gonna pinch me and kill me with venom, but there's like thousands of scorpions, you know, and everyone is different. Different. Yeah. So the ones you have aren't venomous? Or They're not, they have small venom, but it's like, it's like a bee sting to you. So a human. It still hurts. It's put into like a cricket or a, you know, it still, a, hurt. It still hurt for sure, yeah. But <laughs> versus something you? that can sting you and yeah, kill you'd you. be dead in an hour versus something that's wow. like, oh, that just hurt a little bit, you know? So that's the, that's the, the, the gradual scale of it. How, how many times have you been like bitten or stung or? I'll show you. My scars have scars and scars. Oh my gosh, man. This is, this is one of my favorite things to do. People always ask me, so I, I, I take my scars with pride. So you see those scars there? Yeah. There. What are those from? Just random bites and scratches. A scratch there. Uh, all up on my wrist up here. Oh my gosh, man. There. You know, here. Probably your fingers are yeah, constantly oh yeah, dude, my fingers. 
See all the little, the little anything that's like discoloration. Oh my gosh! It's just man. like old scars. Scratch there, yeah. Yep, yeah, there. So, what are the types of animals that have bit you or scratched you? Or Everything. Really? Yeah, but it's like I don't talk about it on a show because it's not like it's everyday life. It happens. You right? know, it's like ninety-five percent of the time it's just on an accident. Have you ever been like scared for your life? Like, oh, I'm in a bad situation. This is not. Plenty of times. Give yeah. me, a, give me a couple moments. Like. When? I don't like sharing those moments with people, you know, because I kind of, it gives animals a bad. Yeah, sure. There's, there's enough. But you're also doing way more than most people would do. Yeah. And putting yourself out there. And I like, think one day I, I have a lot of stuff documented. I'm a, I'll am go through and share some cool, you know, like near-death experiences really? or accidents or. Can you share one? What was like one incident that you were like, oh, this was, maybe nothing happened bad, oh, but it was like, oh, see. this could have been a bad situation. I went to the Bahamas. Uh -huh. I swim with sharks for the first time. Oh my gosh! And uh, <laughs> I'm me. I like I'm a, I'm a type of guy. I'm like literally. I'm either all in or I, I shouldn't have been there in the yeah, first yeah. place. Yeah, you yeah. know. And if I'm there, I, it's, it's it's happening. So I went on this boat in the Bahamas just about a year ago, and uh, I never swam with sharks before, for the first time. So you know, I, of course. You know, you see the Shark Week on TV, yeah, and you see Jaws, and you see all this crazy stuff. But I know, like, I'm an animal guy, so I have to accept. You got to do it. Everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even if I'm not educated on it, I have to educate myself on it. Wow. You know, and, and learn and, and embrace it. Even if I don't like it or want to do it, I have to do it because it's my it's my job. And um, I can swim like a fish. I love marine. Every I have sharks and turtles tattooed on my leg. Wow. But um. Dude, I got underwater water and I never had a scuba tank before. So the dude was like, you can't come, you can only free dive. And I'm like, dude, I want to go deep and, and I want to see these sharks, bro. Like, stop playing with me. So he went underwater with the tank and he, uh, he had this bigger nurse shark and he went under there. And then um, I think some black tip reef sharks were swimming by, which are a little more aggressive shark. The nurse sharks are like, <clears throat> kind of like puppies, Babies. pussies, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. So. I wasn't worried at all, but when, you know, when he said there's reef sharks coming, I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be gangster. So um, I wasn't worried about the sharks, it was more so of the breathing apparatus. You have to, you know, I'm on a scuba tank. Uh -huh. So you go 15, 20 feet in the water and I'm walking on the ocean floor, you know? Like, and there's sharks swimming, there's stingrays and there's fish. And I'm having, I'm, ha I'm having like a, a lucid experience, you know, like walking on the ocean floor. Crazy. You know, with a, I never, you have, you, have, you have to take a class and get certified yeah, to do yeah. stuff like this. I never did it. So I was breathing, but I got kind of a little excited. Yeah, yeah. I, so I, 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 I breathe in water, you know, and I'm underwater with a scuba tank that I have no clue about what to do. You know, do I swim to the top and catch my breath? Do I? So I swallow the water and started trying to breathe in the water. It's no. the freakiest thing, bro. Like, not, salt water. Yeah. You know, and the sharks swim around, so I can't like panic and like, you know, I don't want to freak out. So it's literally like, I can feel my eyes tightening up, and just it's a weird experience, bro. So not from an animal, you got it was near death. It was from just like. This, but you got to think, a situation yeah. like that is where accidents happen with uh, the animals, you know. Because they can feel the they fear. They can feel the fear. Time. After I start freaking out, the sharks are like, okay, is this something hurt? Is he? It's, it's the time to eat. You know what I'm saying? So I start freaking out. Something to the top. I'm bringing attention to myself rather than being something that's just natural, you know? So moments like those, you gotta compose yourself. Well, who could fucking compose themselves underwater, you know, when you're swallowing water 15, 20 feet on the ocean floor with someone holding on to you oh my gosh. with a tube in your mouth that you have nothing, no clue about, just telling you to breathe. You know, these guys are licensed divers and I'm Joe Schmo that <laughs> made him bring me down right. there, you know? So <clears throat> you have a split second, you're like, dude, this is a bad idea. And yeah. then you're like, all right, fuck it, I'm here. All right. You talk about fear. You say that fear is a generational habit that can be broken. How'd you decide that? It's more so of like, I've seen it with animals. People were, oh my God, snakes are horrible. My grandma says, not my grandma, but people say, yeah. you see a snake, a good snake's a dead snake. You know, so mm -hmm. you have all these people that are for years and years and years just passed down fear. Passed down fear. Spiders, snakes, you know, whatever. Spiders, snakes. My grandma's the same way. She doesn't like to drive on the highway. And I'm just like, dude, you drive on the street, you're just going 10 miles an hour faster. Yeah. You know, what are you scared of? It's just, it's a psychological thing. But her mother didn't drive that much, you know. And then her <clears throat> sister didn't drive that much. So they passed down the fear of driving on the highway. 
And it's like, dude, you're not giving me that shit. I don't want no, no fear that you guys got over there. Yeah. But it's like, once you get past a fear, it's so such a great feeling. Yeah. You know, it's like the best thing you've, you've never had. Freedom. 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 You know, and that's what I, I apply to everything. You know, a podcast. You're mm -hmm. scared to talk in front of the camera. Never did it before, but fuck it, we're here. <laughs> you know, let's do <laughs> make it. Make it magic, baby. You know, make it magic. <laughs> Why do you think it's important for people to see someone who looks like you doing something that's unexpected? Because most of the, you know, Steve Irwins of the world, the zookeepers of the world are all white. All right? white people, like, yeah. You never see a black person. Exactly. Like, like wrangling animals and hanging out with snakes. And I got spiders. more so the confidence from my family, uh, my white side of my family. You know, because uh, I have a Cape Verdean background, so Portuguese and black, and then my grandma is like Russian and Polish and huh. some other crazy that's stuff. Cool. So you see it's this black family, and then my great grandmother, this like blonde hair, blue eyes. Really? Yeah, like the soul of my family. Huh. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I saw those growing up, I never seen like black and white. Of course, I knew the difference between people, but you know, they're my family just as much as my mom and dad because I grew up with them. They were the same bloodline as me. So when I saw that animal space, and I noticed it when I was like 14 or 15, there was not a single black person that ever did anything that I wanted to do, I'm like, dude, I can use that as my advantage. Wow. You know? And it's also an inspiration because I inspire everybody. I don't care if you're black, white, Spanish, Asian. Yeah. I got literally love for everybody, every religion. You know, I don't care what you believe in, I still love you. You know, we're just, I just spread nothing but love and positivity and peace to everybody, you know? And I feel like that's, that's what wins. <clears throat> you know, I feel like people are like, oh, I can't hang out with this person because they're Jewish or they're Muslim. Dude, I don't care, bro, I wanna, I wanna learn. Teach me your language, you know, teach me your culture. I want to, let's be friends, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I, I hate barriers with anything, you know? I, I just love to be free, like animals, yeah. you know? Just wow. be free. Did you uh, play sports growing up too? Yeah. It was like an athlete. Like yeah. You played football. My, um, I actually hated sports my entire life, but my whole family is <clears throat> full of athletes, you know? And I was the only weird one because I liked animals, you know? So. <laughs> You got my brothers and cousins. That's my dad was a McDonald's All American in high school. Wow. You know, my older stepbrother went to the league, NBA, played for the Mavericks. Uh -huh. I got a slew of like athletes, and then you just got old oh, animal boy over here. Yeah. You know, so they're like, dude, why are you not playing this? Why are you not playing that? Why are you not doing this? I'm like, bro, leave me alone. So after, you know, years of saying no, I finally said, yeah, I started playing football, started wrestling, started playing basketball. Really? Yeah, and I got pretty good at it, you know, because I, I got addicted to the, yeah, the yeah. progress and the process. Yeah. You played high school? Did you, play, did you, live, you go to college, too? Play? Yeah, I played uh, one year of college. Where'd you go? Played slot receiver at Georgia Military College and uh, Atlanta Sports Academy. All right. Pretty cool. Nice, man. I played wide receiver, too. Nice. I played in the Arena League for about a year and a half. How was it? It was tough, man. Arena's I, different I than the... It's different, man. It's indoors, you know, you got walls. Yeah. So I broke my wrist diving into a wall trying to catch a football. It's just like the the roughest sport. I mean, it's the guys who are pissed that they didn't make the NFL, mm -hmm. or they dropped in the NFL. They're trying to get back up, and it's just like I want to kill you. Yeah. And I'm gonna work my way back up there. That's crazy. It's crazy thing like that, you know. It's so tough, man. It's like wild. I, I love competition, though. I love it, man. On, on, on an athletic level, yeah. It's like something that I crave, like. I crave it, man. Dude, I can't. I, miss it. I can't lose. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, I can't. I hate losing too, dude. I, I, I hate losing more than I love winning. Yeah, I've learned. It's funny you'll learn because <clears throat> I, I was the worst loser for many years. I would like be so upset for hours, days yeah. that I lost. Even Same like here. the simplest little competition, ping pong, basketball, didn't matter what it was. Mm -hmm. But now I've learned like that anger, if I hold on to it, or frustration, doesn't serve humanity. Nope. It doesn't lift people up. Nope. It doesn't support me or the people around me. So I've learned how to take a loss as a learning experience quickly and just reapply the education from exactly. that loss into, okay, how can I be better? Exactly. And, and people should think like that, man, mm -hmm. you know? It's you win and you learn. You don't win and lose. That's it. You learn how to win. That's it. You know, you figure learn. out what you messed up. Learn how to get better, you yeah. tweak that mistake and you go at it again. Yeah. You keep going at it until you win. That's, that's the way of life. That's what people need to understand. Yeah. You don't lose. And when you people lose and they say, okay, I lost, I'm done. And then you go, you're losing something else and you're done with that. And then you lose something else. You, you, you create a cycle of yourself mm -hmm. of just fucking quitting, you know? 
And when you, when you finally figure out why you want to win and where you're winning at, you can apply that in your spiritual life, your mental life, mm -hmm. your finance life, you know, your relationship, everything. So, just straight winning. Yeah. So did you, did you start working? When was the first job that you had where you got paid working with animals? First job. How, how old were you? I was uh, 17 years old. Was I got my store? Is that what you're working at there? Not, not this one, but in Atlanta, I got a job at this place called Petland. It's a regular mom and pop shop that sold dog food and dogs and cats and little birds, mice or, little mice yeah, for yeah. snakes and f goldfish yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know like three or four snakes and That's you it. know just a regular pet store. Dude, I got in there and I felt like a million bucks. Really? They, actually, they actually didn't hire me at first. You're just working for free. Yeah, like... they're like, why is this kid here every day? You know, like I want a job. <laughs> but you know, at the time I had long dreadlocks, I had tattoos, just fresh out of college, well going into college and stuff. Yeah. So you know, like what is this black guy would. Tattoos and dreadlocks, no by animals, you know. And I'm like, you probably taught them a lot, didn't you? Dude, I had, I learned a lot. You did, learn yeah. A lot. I thought, you know, that's when I, at first, started becoming in a real open book. You know, I started helping customers and, you know, just seeing the joy in people's faces. And I'm like, man, I want to be able to give them so much more. Wow. You know, but I can't give anything more if I don't know more. You know, so I would start every time we would have, we would have animals come in. I would pick certain animals I never had before and I would study the fuck out of them and I would, I would order stuff for their stuff in captivity like their habitats and stuff mm -hmm. and then when someone came in and they were interested in that animal I'm like you want this okay you know everything about it now. here's what you do boom 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 and they're like wow you know but you can't get that service at Petco or PetSmart they're like go to aisle three right. or yo Billy go back to bit go back to fish for him and feed yeah. him for Drops of fish food, change water once a week, boom. Right, right. But Unless I'm here they had like someone who was there that was like you. Or, or I'm here giving you when they breed, how they breed, what they eat, why they eat, why you got to turn the light off, how many yeah. times you got to spray them. Wow. You know, like climate, hibernation, like everything. Right. You know, and they're just like, wow, that's so awesome. You know, and then that person goes home with this animal, and you, you know, they Educated. come back for checking. They come, they, yeah. they come back. They get crickets. They buy new light bulbs. You ask them how's your animal doing. He's doing great. And then seven months later, oh, I got another one, you know, and then, and then you talk to them, you don't talk to them for three years, and then you find out on Facebook that they have the biggest reptile what collection in Wisconsin or some shit. You're like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's awesome, you know, to be able to give something that I love to someone else and they love it too. It's just a beautiful thing. It's amazing. What about the people who say, well, we shouldn't be buying animals or having animals in our home or in our backyard we should let them be wild they're wild animals why yeah. do we have them in captive what do you say to people like that i agree to a certain extent uh, animals of course should be in the wild you know but you gotta think sometimes in the wild they don't have homes because of us Ooh, you know and a lot of people forget that concept and then another thing is if people don't have animals you know like here, you lose touch with them. You lose touch with you, nature. You become oblivious yeah. to the problems that's happening in the wild. You kind, of, you kind of don't care, you know, versus if dogs are being slaughtered in China. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you've never had a dog in your life, if the whole United States never had a dog, you're like, Who fuck cares? cares? Yeah. You know? Because you're not connected to it. Exactly. But you have, being a dog lover, you know, like, you're like, oh man, that hurts. Yeah. It hits home. What can I do to help? Yeah. You, you, you just think about it. You know, even if you're not doing something actively, or physically, it, it, it puts that thought in your mind. So if I can put that thought in that mind of everybody, I'm not saying I encourage people to have animals in captivity, but in all reality, the reality of it is people will always have animals in captivity. You know, it's not a what if or why can't they. It's just they are. Humans are going to have animals in captivity. So if they are going to have them, it's the reality of it, it's the realness of it. We need to be able to educate these people on why they have these animals and what can we do to better their lives in captivity. Because some people have animals in captivity that they breed them, they help them, and then they release them into the wild to help populations go. And then they're screwed because... It's not set up the right way or they weren't educated. Exactly. Wow. What's the most endangered species right now in the world? Do you know? Um, the most endangered species? Um, I know the most trafficked animal is a pangolin. Um, rhinos are critically endangered. Yeah. Elephants are hitting, really? you know, uh, a rapid decrease. Um, a lot of a lot of animals, especially in in a, in a African area, is is, is getting hit hard. A lot of people are hunting, right? Hunting, yeah. you know, they banned hunting, so illegal poaching went up, and you know, it's just it's horrible, you know. And that goes back to having that 
that that heart for these animals you know what i'm saying it, yeah. so if some people see these things like it's been happening for like six years you know and it's like dude hey wake up guys these yeah. animals are rapidly dying by the thousands yeah. like you guys don't care you guys you're not seeing it How, what can i do to say hey yo look at this this is not right this is happening we gotta fix it you know so i like you know being that voice for the voiceless that's good you know because these animals can't tell you hey man i need help i need yeah. help you know what I'm yeah. saying? The numbers just keep decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. And by the time it hits the global news, when they want to pick it up, when there's 10 it's rhinos left, late. it's, too, it's too fucking late, you know? It's like, where were you guys at four or five years ago when we, when we had 10,000 10, left? From 100,000, that's the, even a drastic difference. But don't make, don't make fucking headlines when there's 10 left, you know? Yeah. That's, that's, that's too late. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna wait to that brink of extinction yeah. to make a, cha make a change. What has working with animals taught you about connecting with humans? Humans are crazy. I look at humans and like, man, you guys are dangerous. Wow. That's what, me being around animals so much and seeing how they live and you know adapt, you know, and uh, survive and eat and breed and just everything about animals. I'm so obsessed with it. Then I look at the human species and I'm like, we are fucking dangerous. We are animals, bro. You know, whether people want to believe it or not. We are animals, yeah. you know, and there's just a lot of good people out there, a lot of good people. But, you know, you look at the globe and I remember, I think it was in fourth or fifth grade. I remember looking at the world population, it's like three billion or something like that. You know, now I'm 20, 25, it's like seven billion. It's like, man, we're growing like fast, fast like a lot. Mm -hmm. Imagine, you know, another 25 years from now, there's 14 billion people. Where are we gonna go? Yeah. We go in this oh, animals land. Going you know, we yeah. you know, go up, you know, frick. So I just I like I don't like humans. Not like humans, but you know, like in general. Yeah, I'm I'm an animal guy, so I spend yeah. my whole life with animals. So I've been kinda anti social my whole life. You know, so social media has bought out the social side of me, you know. To connect with people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And it's cool. It's a definitely like starting to like humans more a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Certain humans. Yeah, yeah. I started off with children first. I worked in the school district for about six years in uh, Miami and Broward, so I got to educate the children on animals and the relationship with the kids and the animals. It was such a dope feeling and experience, you know. So. Where were you working at the time? Yeah. What, where was that you were working? Uh, South Florida. So I had a job yeah. at a reptile store called uh -huh. Underground Reptiles. I worked at a zoo called Zoological Wildlife Foundation. In Miami? Yep, in Miami. So you worked at the zoo for how long? Uh, about a year. year. About a year and a half. And you were work working with the kids at the zoo? Or yeah, well, I was working with the kids <clears throat> on like every aspect. I had my own small iguana business. I was rescuing iguanas. Really? <clears throat> yeah, I did educational shows and events. I did uh, my regular management work at the reptile store, building cages, helping customers, picking up shipments, you know, the whole shebang. You know, I, I worked seven days a week uh, for like three years straight, not a day off. Of course, when I like went on vacation or something, but dude, I'm so like involved in my niche of work, you know, from children to rescuing iguanas to working with monkeys at a zoo to learning as a young zookeeper, you know, working at my old job, answering the phone, going out feeding 700 lizards outside in the hot blazing sun and coming inside and pulling eggs and checking incubator, incubator temperatures and dotting down data. Just, wow. just all stuff that I love to do, you know? So when I can generate 100 hours a week, seven days a week, working for somebody else, and when I finally birthed my whole Tarzan project, I was able to put all those hours for somebody else into my own craft. Mm -hmm. And it's just been an amazing thing. So the, so the Tarzan project, is that what you're working on now? Yeah. Is that the, the brand, the business? When, we started, did, you, when did you start that? We started Tarzan. Uh, the real Tarzan? Ten months ago. And so you just started it. This is your brand, your company. What What is it? What's the mission? And so what Tarzan. Besides all the crazy videos that I see. It's more so of me being a mirror. I'm a, I'm a walking mirror. That's, that's just, this is my motto to the world. This is, people want to ask me what I do, why I do what I do. My business, whether it's Tarzan or King of the Jungle or just my coach, and the name doesn't matter. But I want people to see me and my brand and whatever I do as themselves. Mm. I want them to look at me and look directly back at themselves. Because I come from nothing. I'm just a regular street hood kid from the smallest state in the United States. You know what I'm saying? And 
if I can do it, you can do it. That's, that's my motto. So people see Tarzan, and I want people to see themselves in their arts and crafts, or they want to open up a wine business, or they want to be a chiropractor. I want you guys to put that same effort that you see me do into your stuff, because I believe in you, because I come from nothing, and I want to see you make it. Mm. So that's what my Tarzan project is. Of course, educating people with animals, et cetera, et cetera, but the whole project's way bigger than just myself. It's yeah. about the people, you know, and inspired, encouraging people to be bold, you know, that's why I came up with the, it was first, I am Tarzan. And then, because I was wanting to be Tarzan as a kid, so I never stopped thinking about being Tarzan. Now that I'm Tarzan, it's like, okay. Everybody's like, oh, Tarzan's so cool. It's like, no, you're cool. Go do your own <laughs> shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's just, I want to be able to inspire these people from a real level, yeah. you know? And I feel like I can touch people because I'm young, 24 year old millennial kid that lived in South Beach that's, you know, still parties, listens to rap music, that's all this stuff, but I'm just so focused on my dreams and goals that, you know, you can't shit break me. Yeah. You know, so I want to be able to reiterate that to the younger people, the younger generation, the people in middle school, people in high school now and college now, people that are struggling now already have degrees. I want to be able to get them that motivation, like, look, bro, go out there and get that shit. Don't take no mm. for an answer. Don't take no else. You just win and you learn. Yeah. You know, but that's what Tarzan's about. That's Tarzan as a project. Is just basically being a giant mirror of yourself. Mm, I like that, man. And what's the business model for you? Is it events? Is it curating? I, I, like I want to educate in the highest platform. You know, of course, Instagram has gave me such, you know, such an exposure, and I'm very grateful for it. You know, but was Will Smith the one who? Oh kind of yeah, like bro. Launched it even to more heights. It was building it on your own, and then yeah, I was, I was, you know, I still to this day I'm hustling hard on it, but you know, like. It feels good to be able to work and work and work and work, and then one day you get an email from Will Smith's company, and I thought it was spam, honestly. What did it say? It just said, hey, we're from Will Smith's team. We love what you do. Will's a big fan of your work, and we want to do a collaboration, you know? And then I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what you know? what happened? So, of course, I replied to the email, and I said, absolutely, I would love to work with you guys. But I had the thought, you know, that thought in the back of my head, like, it's never going to happen. You know, it's like... It's Will Smith, bro, you know, like, who has just Will Smith emailing them? Yeah, you know, exactly. it just doesn't make sense, <laughs> you know? So I had that hope, but then again, I was like, this is not real. Yeah. And then a few weeks pass, and then I actually, I didn't forget about it, but I kind of like, just kept moving, mm -hmm. you know? And I ended up coming out here with one of my friends, Austin, and I was, I got on a plane at like one o'clock from Miami, East Coast time. I had 1.2 million followers when I got on the plane. It's pretty big on your own in like yeah. 10 months doing yeah. it on your own, it was, right? It was insane, dude. So I got on a plane. I had like, well, I just, I remember, I remember making a post on Instagram saying, thank you all for supporting me. We just hit 1.2 million followers. I love you all. I can't wait to continue to see what's next. You know, so I get on the plane. Uh, I take off. And I usually always buy Wi-Fi when I'm on the plane so I can keep working, answer emails, reply to text messages and DMs. I'm like, you know what? I'm working hard. I'm just going to rest <laughs> on this take flight. Take a few hours to chill. I'm going to take a few hours to chill, go to sleep, you know, and then I'll start fresh when I land because I was going to, when I land, I'm back working hard, again. Yeah. And dude, I landed and I turned my phone on. I'm like, yo, why is my phone like blowing up? It's not even blowing up yet. It's like freezing. <laughs> You know, so I open my phone and I put it in my pocket. I go get my luggage, and then I feel, I feel my phone go like. Zzz, zzz, zzz. So I open my phone, bro. I have like 200 text messages. Like, yo, Will Smith just posted you. Like, <laughs> literally everybody I ever had like in my contacts yeah, text like, oh me. My gosh. If I haven't talked to you for years, I got a text message. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? So I was like, I was just like, no way. So I go to my Instagram. I got 1.8 million followers. Oh my god! Within like three. Four, five, a, a LA flight from yeah. the East Coast to the West Coast. I went from 1.2 to 1.8, just like that. One post. One post. And it kept going. And you never met him. You didn't meet I, him yet. And I, I didn't meet him yet, no. I never talked to him on you the phone. You didn't know they were going to post you? No, they didn't nothing. see the video or anything. Like he, he just reshared a video, right? Or no, what? no, no. He made his own like compilation, like highlight reel of me. Of you. Yeah, and then he was like, this is, you know, Mike Holston. The real Tarzan, he's incredibly, like, Will Smith talking, like, saying this stuff. Like, in my mind, I started crying when it happened. I didn't tell him that before. It's the first time people hearing that, you know, but, like. I cried, too. I was like, oh, Dude, I sat there, and I, like, literally started crying, you know, like. How, how did it make you feel? To dude, know that it was he like. really, like, cared about your mission, your message, your. 
for so long, bro, you know, I've been working on my Tarzan since a little kid, you know, I had this vision of being Tarzan and I got plenty of doubts from, you know, my family, from friends, just everybody like, yo, don't do that, you know, don't work with animals, there's no money in it, there's, there's no this, yeah. there's no that, there's, I've, I've heard it all, you know, and um, it was cool to be able to have someone that I looked up to, like Will Smith, like, yo, I support you, I love what you're doing, you know, and that meant a lot to me because I put so much blood, sweat, and tears into my little small craft to have someone at such a high level, and and not even from being with Smith, I was at a dark place in my, not a dark place, but I was like depressed and lonely for a certain, like a long time in my life. And Eric Thomas and Will Smith, I watched their videos on YouTube. I cut all music out of my life for like two years. And I listened to straight motivational podcasts and speeches. Wow. And it basically like cleansed me. And Will Smith, Eric Thomas, C.T. Fletcher, this guy named Bradley yeah. Martin. I went through this whole like fitness, you know, phase and working hard on my craft. That's when I developed working 100 hours a week, that's when I birthed all that stuff. So to stay focused, I didn't I didn't go out to the club, I didn't hang out with chicks, I didn't do nothing but work out, go to the gym, listen to those guys, Will Smith. So when it was, you know, that time hit, you know, it brought back everything, you know. Wow. As soon as I, I heard his voice, like, this is Mike Holson and the real Tarzan, dude, it's just like, came like a ton of bricks, you know, of happiness. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit, dude, like, this is really happening. Because, you know, seeing these followers, it's cool, you know, they're just numbers, you're people that are interested in what you do. But it goes to a whole other stratosphere when you have people of that caliber, like, okay, this guy's wow. dope. And they publicly go do that, you know, these guys are busy. They don't have to do that. They don't have to do that. They have millions of dollars, you know, they have so many projects at work, they have families. What are you worried about little Tarzan for, you know? The same thing with P. Diddy, you know, Diddy's a big part of my life. You know, and it's like, it's so cool. Did he find you after Will Smith? Did he reach out and then all these people start reaching out after that? I, I, I'm not sure the process of how he found out about me, but I remember seeing him and he's like, we got to connect. Cause I was mm -hmm. hanging out with his children already. You were? Yeah, before, his kids, yeah. Before Will Smith was... Yeah, yeah. Him, well, yeah. I, would, I would see his kids every now and then when I went out to go network and stuff. And, and um, show them animals and snakes. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So I saw, him at, I saw him here in L.A. at the same exact time. That Will Smith posted me. I was on, I was in L.A. I went to a day party. Had no clue Diddy was gonna be there. Diddy's there, you know. He's like, "Hey, what's up, Tarzan?" I'm like, "How the fuck does P. Diddy know who I am?" You know? He's like, "Hey, we gotta talk some business, man. I love what you do. We'll chop it up one day." Wow. P. Diddy, billionaire, Ciroc, bad boy, yeah. Sean John, you know. You're just hanging out with snakes. Just crazy, Chilling. you yeah. know. And it just it's all history from there. This was you know, what, like a couple months ago or something? It was like two months ago, three months ago. So what has happened in your life since then? Like what are the, since the, Will the business opportunities? Since the post Will Smith, that, yeah, post everything Will like changed. Huh? Changed. What's been happening? Yeah. Nothing Maybe. changed for me as far right, as right. like you're still doing the same thing. Well, stuff behind the scenes that I'm working on. It's just what can, like, you, what can you share? What's changed? Who are the people that have reached out to you since then that you've connected? Tarzan with? got a TV show coming in 2019. That's all I'm going to say. All right, my man. You know, I like it. so I can't say where, I can't say when. Sure. Just know. You can see this I'm beautiful, bright smile with a bunch of animals. I like it, man. Coming soon. So that's one of my, uh, you know, and I guess going back to saying, you know, once you get here, you got to keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, like, of course, I can say, oh, I got a TV show. I made it. Fuck everybody. I'm done. You know, but the real me is like, dude, this is it. This is where you, this is where you, you really go, go hard. Yeah. This is where you really block everything out and you really focus you really start studying you really learn different languages you really start mm. you know mastering your physical aspects of just everything you know so this wow. is this is scary for like it's scary but also people good. think like yo this guy like, you have no clue what i'm about to tap into you know like they thought eric thomas and will smith did something to me years ago that made this wait till now <laughs> you know like I like it, man. It's 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 fun, man. What is what has kept you motivated to pursue this dream, even when the money hasn't been there, or it's not this profitable? Like I've been broke this whole year. Until now. Richard Hart. Richard Hart. Richard Hart. You know, like there's nothing. It's I've been homeless. I've struggled. I've lost everything. I've lost animals. I've lost people. Yeah. You know, so when. Little stuff happens in my life, little problems. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me, you know, because I know I can overcome it. You know, it's more so of a mental thing. And I lost my dad when I was 14, so mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's probably my main 
focal point of why I drive hard every day because me and my dad was real close, mm. you know? So when I lost my dad, I lost, I lost love. You know, I didn't love nobody, didn't love anything. That's when I told you I was in that dark place from, you know, 14 till about a few years ago. And dude, it just, I, I had to transition that anger and that hurt and that pain into something positive, you know? So once I made that, it took a while, it took, it's still hard for me to this day, you know? But I made that small turn and dude, it just like, it, I don't know where it comes from. Yeah. It's like, you know, I pray a lot. I ask God for strength and guidance and motivation, you know, and open doors and closed doors, give me signs. So whatever happens in my life, I just flow with it, you know, and I, I'm always, always working. Wow. And I, I, I made a promise to myself and God um, after I was homeless before, I told I would never go hungry again. I would never go homeless again. And I heard something inside of me, as long as you work hard, you'll never go without food and you'll never go without shelter. So after that day, I'm busting my fucking ass <laughs> good, every day. And I've never been homeless. And I've been hungry sometimes, but yeah. it ain't to the point where like, yeah, you know. Intermittent fasting. Yeah, yeah just call it you know, yeah, so, yeah. it's okay, fasting. I can take a day off, it's yeah, all right. Exactly. You know, so. what's, the, what's the greatest lesson your dad taught you? If you're gonna do it, do it. And what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh -huh. that's, that's one thing he always told me growing up, you know, and I didn't know what it meant until I needed to know what it meant. And that was actually one of the first tattoos I got across my chest. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Wow. You know, so when he was killed, you know, it broke me, but it made me unbreakable in the mm. same sense, you know, because I loved him so much. You know, he was a hero, you know, he's, you have, you have a dad, right? Absolutely. You know, so your dad's like, bro, That's it's it, like man. dad, you know, what, what kid would want, what does he want his dad? Love your dad, you know? So when that was taken away from me, it was, everything was gone. My love for animals, my love for, I didn't love really? my own family. Really? You know? So what brought me back to reality was the animals, which just saved me because I was depressed, I was lonely. I didn't have anybody to come to, you know? So once I got back with these animals, I started praying a lot. Dude, like, I felt love again. You know, I felt, I felt myself come back. And that's why I go so hard for the animals because animals is what saved my life. Wow. Without even knowing. Wow. You know, I knew, I knew they'd bring me happiness my whole life. But when I was in my darkest place in my life, that I didn't care or love myself or anybody, they loved me. Wow. You know, they brung it, they brung it out of me and I'm like, dude. And they needed you. Yeah. You know, just as much as I needed them. Yeah. You know, so like, it's cool to be able to, people don't know the real story of, you know, my life because nobody knows me. They just know Tarzan and cool videos of apes and lions and, you know, snakes and stuff. But this whole animal stuff is what that keeps me going every day is what keeps me happy. Like, I don't know anything else to do. You know, I have small hobbies, but every day, every second of my day, every thought is around animals because that's what keeps Mike happy. That's what changed my life, you know? So when I get to this point in life where these animals have brung me, you know, it's like, fuck, I gotta do everything in my power for them. Yeah. You know, so that's why I go so hard on the education, you know, and it's not even from a, of aspect of education is understanding, you know? Like yeah. people just want to be, like people, people just want to be understood. So do the animals, they just want to be understood, you know? I don't care to be understood because I let the work speak for itself, you know? I don't like talking much, that's why i never done like any podcast or <laughs> right. interviews. It's just, I've always had dreams my whole life to do stuff and every time I told people, it was like, oh, dude, that doesn't sound good. Mm. You know, so I was like, okay, how about I fucking show you? Yeah. You know, and then you give me your 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 uh, your answer afterwards. Right. You know, yeah. so that's good. It's cool to be able to it's just great, do man. it. I love it, man. I love it. What about the biggest lesson your mom taught you? Biggest lesson my mom taught me. Hmm. My mom is a hell of a woman. Strong. Strong as shit, and my, my mom taught me without, without knowing she taught me was it's okay to leave and do your own thing. My mom um, comes from the same hood um, my family comes from, but she was the first one to leave. You know, when everything was bad in my neighborhood and my family, she was the first one to leave Rhode Island to Atlanta to give us a new life, wow. and she had nothing. She just went with her gut feeling, 
you know, she knew an opportunity was going to make itself something out of it. And she brought two of her kids and herself with like a hundred bucks in her pocket and we drove 18 hours from Rhode Island, packed all our stuff up and went down to Atlanta. Never looked back, but it was the best thing she could have did for us. Mm. Because if we stayed home, we wouldn't have made it. I'd have been dead, easily. All the, all the kids I grew up with, all my friends, went to the Boys and Girls Club, played football with, went to elementary and middle school with, they're all dead. Every last one of them. That's why I, I take this stuff so serious, because like, I ain't supposed to be here, yeah. you know? And it, it, like, it kind of makes me emotional now, yeah. but it's a good thing, because I like to inspire people to show them the realness of it. Like, I lost a lot, but I gained a lot. Cause I get to show them, you know, there's, there's life outside of whatever you go through. Yeah, you can always make it. So, I like to show people that strength you can have without knowing you have it, you know? Seeing my mom, she had the strength to leave, but she didn't know she gave me strength to leave. So when I left Atlanta to go to Miami, you know, to live with my dreams, mm -hmm. it made it, you know? It made, it, it gave me that strength to go. I was like, okay, if mom can do it, I can do wow. it. And the same thing with that fear. It's so generational, it just keeps going. But then you look at it, my grandmother, my mom's mom, back in the day, left from Rhode Island and moved to California. No friends, no family, no nothing. With all her kids, my aunts and my mom and stuff, so. My mom got that from her. Then I got that from my mom. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And it just, you look at that effect in life and it's like, holy shit. It's crazy. Wow, man. You know, so I take all this shit real deep and serious. You know, I get, I have a lot of fun on social media, you know, but there's like, there's so much behind it that, there's yeah. so much in the, in the gas tank, in the engine that keeps this going, you know? Yeah. And it's well, lovely. Yeah, man. Thanks for sharing that. Definitely. Sorry yeah. for getting all choked up, you it's know. It's good, man. That's what we do here. We get real here. Real talk, Zan, real life, you know. Yeah. What message would you have the young kids who, who grew up like you, who maybe are afraid to adventure out and try new things, whether it's being with animals or just trying new things and in general? Pray. Yeah. Pray for strength, pray for guidance, and believe in yourself, you know. Everybody doubted me. I never doubted myself. How did you believe in yourself when everyone doubted you? How do you believe when you, when you don't have that belief? It's just, it's hard to explain. It's more so of, that's, that, that's where I feel like praying comes into play at. You know, people, and again, this is going to, I don't care what religion you are, you know? I love everybody, mm -hmm. so I give this advice to people. If you believe in Buddha, or you're a Christian, you're whatever you are, I don't care. I yeah. still love you. So what I'm going to say is to apply to your life is pure faith. You believe in the higher power, you should believe in yourself. If you can pray and see stuff and want to achieve stuff and you, you're going to work hard towards it, whoever you pray to is going to help you. You're going to help yourself. You know? You're going to have enough strength and motivation <clears throat> to keep going. So when the world tells you no, whatever you read in the Bible, or whatever you're doing in your life, God is gonna give you signs that you're gonna see, and only things you're gonna see is what you prayed about. So when I pray and ask God for signs, and he puts signs in my life, I'm like, okay. Here we go. Here we yeah. go, yeah. you know? I always ask him to open and close doors in my life. So when he closes doors, sometimes I'm like, fuck, I wanted that door to be open, you know? And then it's like, I prayed for it. I prayed for it, you and know? And he gave it to me, and a year later, I realized, I realized, I'm like, oh. That's why. That's why. That's why. Yeah. Totally get it, you know, yeah. so. It hurts sometimes to close doors. Though. Yeah, bro, it does, you know, but God always got a better door open for you, mm. you know, so just have faith in yourself, you know, work hard, and I'm telling you, you can become a very scary individual. In a, in a good, good way. In a good way. <laughs> in a good I way. like that. Um, what's your, you love animals so much. Do you, do you eat meat? Yeah. What's this your, is a great conversation. I've been your dying viewpoint? to have this what's your, conversation. So my mom's a vegan. I have lots of vegan friends. Yeah. You know, I eat meat, but I also believe in being more plant-based. Yeah. If possible. The more like conscious minded I become, it's like thinking about where the meat comes from and everything like that. So why do you eat meat if you love animals that much? Well, I grew up on meat, you know, and of course now, like I say, I get educated in things. And um, 
of course, with all the great publicity I'm getting with them, most people are asking, why do you eat meat still? You know, but then again, I'm real about it. So, of course, you have, and again, I don't mean to offend anybody with what I'm going to say, but you got these vegans, and not all vegans, you know, but they, they kind of attack oh, yeah. certain people. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, you need to do this and this, you know, it's like that's not how you approach situations yeah, yeah. for one. So the main... Come from a loving place. Yeah, the main reason I'm not a vegan is because of the people. I've been bullied a lot my whole life, you know, so I got kind of like PTSD when that shit, I don't know if it's the right terminology for it, but like when I feel like people are attacking, attacking me, I get on a kind of a, a whole different person. It's just naturally like how I snake. am. Yes. It takes you know, it's like, you're like, you attacks to bite you. You want to fucking fight, let's fight. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's wrong for me to do. I'm learning, you know, to have educational conversations without being on the defense, you know. But um, <clears throat> I have this cool conversation with a lot of vegans. It's been working pretty cool. What is it? You know, and it's like, they ask me about you know, the animals, why you meet, you know, and I'm like, you know, you can't really, I don't waste food. Every time I eat food, I have food in front of me, I eat it. That's how I was raised, you know, and I don't waste anything. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to try to go vegan next year. Really? I'm going to still eat meat, but I'm going to hunt for it myself. Really? Yeah. So I'm going to work for my food. That's what I want to eat meat. Did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's awesome, you know, but um, for like the vegan community, you have to be little less harsh at your words and try to educate a little more on a maybe a different way mm -hmm. the same route i took with animal education so much you can do for so long so you gotta switch shit up you can't shove it down people's throats exactly you gotta entertain and educate and make it fun and do it a different way mm -hmm. yes I, of course i don't <clears throat> agree with you know animals that's killed or slaughtered inhumanely for you know food consumption but we are all animals, we're on the food chain, you know? We have canines in our teeth, that's not for eating plants, of course. You can eat meat, you know? Um, what do they say about, like, well, a gorilla, um, you know, eats vegetables, right? Just like... Yeah, well, a lion just eats meat, you know? It's, it's the same thing. It, it goes hand in hand. Gorilla's People got say, canines, right? Yeah, gorilla's got canines. But it doesn't eat meat, right? But they have, they have more so of uh, where they come from, too, you know? Their, their DNA, how they're wired. It's just different from different animals. You know, of course, like I can't, you, you couldn't switch and eat, you know, for, for a gorilla to eat meat 24 seven, he'd die. Why is that? He can't get the proper nutrients. You know, his stomach can't hold it. He doesn't have mm -hmm. certain acids to digest certain things. Versus a lion, you know, I can't just feed lion kale what? and lettuce and plants all day. <laughs> he'd die. He'd die. Really? You know, he wouldn't get the proper nutrition. Really? You know what I'm saying? Of course, you probably like, blend up proteins and stuff like that and syringe feed them but you know naturally he just can't do it you know so but us as, can. huh we can survive on just plants we can we can we right. can we can bounce back and forth you know um going back to my original statement you know they're like oh these animals this and that and i'm like okay you can't sit there and say that you're a hundred percent for these animals because where do you live? We live in a house. Yeah. What are you wearing? What are you what wearing? You, you know, like the makeup, the shoes, all the that stuff plays in. Drive. You know, the leather yeah. on your car. You know, like all that stuff plays into back into your vegan mm -hmm. stuff. You know what I'm saying? So you can't sit there and say, "Hey you, hey you, hey you," when you have a bunch of "Hey yous" behind you in your life. You know what I'm saying? So, in order for us to be one, be able to spread your message, because it's not just for me. A lot of people don't like the way they approach people, you know? And I'm pretty sure there's tons of people that can have educational, fun conversations mm -hmm. about their way of life, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And it needs to be done in a better way, of course. But just for me, it's like, I'm gonna try it for my own benefits, you know, of hunting for my own food. I like yeah. challenges, you know? Yeah. If I wanna buy food, I'm gonna buy only fruits and veggies. But I'm gonna go fishing, I like to fish, you know? So I'm gonna go fishing, yeah. I'll go hunt. If I wanna eat, I'm gonna go hunt it. All next year, that's my, <clears throat> that's my motto. Just a lot of time and energy. Hey, if I want it, I gotta do it. That's true. You know? If you want to balance, at least a try for a year. Yeah, I always take the approach of like, no matter what stance you have or what you're trying to like come at someone with, whether it's veganism or whatever, just how you show up in general, if you are trying to attack other people on one topic, you better have your whole life figured out exactly. on every other topic. You better be in integrity all the time, a good person, you better be like, you know, in shape, all these other things, like, because then they could just come and attack you on something else. Exactly. So it's like, 
Learn to educate and connect with people on something you're passionate about, but don't make them wrong. Yeah. So when they come at me, I just say, I love you. Yeah. You know, I don't want to argue. I love you. We're on the same team. Have a good day. That's a good response. That's it. Yeah, that's a good response. You know, people always want to fight, but why would you fight your teammate? If you love animals and I love animals and I'm educating and you're out here educating, leave me alone. Yeah. We can have educational <clears throat> conversations, but it's negative. I love you. Yeah. Have a good day. That's good. You know, we're on the same team. Um, okay, final couple questions for you. This yeah. one is called The Three Truths. And I ask this to everyone at the end. Uh, so imagine it's your last day on earth. You choose the day as many years out as you want it to be. You've done everything you want to do. You've accomplished all your dreams. It's all happened. Um, but for whatever reason, you've got to take all the information with you. All the videos and content and work you've done, TV shows, it goes with you when you pass. So no one has access to your information anymore. But you could write down the three things you know to be true about your life, your experiences, the lessons. And there's only three things you could share with the world. What would you say are your three truths? Mm, that's cool. I like that question. So three things that would be the truth if I could take everything away. Love always wins. That's the, that's the truth mm -hmm. of my life. You know, I could easily hate a lot of people for a lot of things, you know, but if I love you, what happens after that? Mm -hmm. You got nothing. Right. You know, if I go negative about it, we can go on for years of negativity, fighting back and forth, you know, all types of crazy stuff. But at the end of the day in my life, what's been making everything happen, it's love. Mm. You know? That's great. Okay. So love, love always wins. Um, hmm. Truth. God is good all the time. Second truth. The third truth. The truth I would love to leave is we need animals more than they need us. Because mm. if they go, we go. Mm. That's the reality of it. Really? That's the truth. So if I were able to leave this earth and not have anything I've ever done be shown but leave three truths behind, love always wins. God is good all the time, no matter who you believe in. And animals. If there's no animals, there's no us. Wow. That's the truth. Wow. Yeah, those are powerful, man. Well, what can we do to support you? What's a project that you want us to follow? Where can we follow you online? At The Real Tarzan on Instagram. You guys gotta check this stuff out. If you guys aren't following, make sure you follow and, and just see the videos, they're inspiring. So, what else is going on for you? Um, a lot of charitable work. We're gonna be uh, giving a lot of money and a lot of, we're gonna do stuff different, you know? A lot, I feel like a lot of companies, organizations have billions of dollars from charity and give back, but they only pinch out a couple hundred thousand dollars maybe a couple, a couple thousand dollars. I want to be known as the dude when I die, like, yo, that motherfucker Tarzan was giving away big checks and doing mm -hmm. big work, you know, and, and just doing real humanitarian and loving, loving work. Like going to Africa, re really rebuilding shit, you know, documenting it, showing people where their money's going, where my money's going, where my time's going. I feel like we missed, we're missing that aspect of reality. Yeah. You know, I feel like us as Americans, we're so, comfortable and cool here, you know, but there's a whole nother world out there that needs, that needs us, you know, yeah. and at the end of the day, we can be Americans, we can be Africans, we can be Europeans or Australians, but at the end of the day, we're all brothers and sisters, we're all people, you know, and that's where the love comes at. Where can we go out and help these people, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where, like, I feel like the love is going to be just so real that we're going to be able to show it, you know, help build on it. I'm, we're starting our nonprofit in 2019, so... You know, I've been losing, using a lot of my own money mm -hmm. to go out and do this work, you know, right. and bringing people along with me, whoever wants to tag along. That's why I feel like I've been building these relationships, you know. Will Smith, Diddy, giving all these eyes, these people, you know, and once we start hitting these real projects and showing the real progress, it's going to be a beautiful That's thing cool, and start a trend of just helping and showing love. That's great, man. So just, I can't tell you what to do now. 
Just follow um, you on social media right now. And yeah, stay just, tuned. Just stay, stay tuned, man. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff coming. A whole lot yeah. of gangster shit coming <clears throat> I like your it, way, man. in a fun way. I like it, man. You know, so. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I got to acknowledge you for a moment, Mike, for, for being authentically you because you grew up in a place that wasn't supportive of your dream, but you did it anyways. Mm -hmm. You did something that most kids that look like you don't do. Exactly. And you're doing it anyways with a lot of passion and love and and generosity. You Absolutely. give back constantly, which is really inspiring. So I acknowledge you for your efforts, your work, your your care for animals that don't have care. And you constantly show up in a in a big way, man, and your heart is uh it's infectious. So I acknowledge all that you Thank doing, you, brother. I really it's appreciate really powerful, that, man. man. Um give my, me some. yeah man, of course man. My final question is, what is your definition of greatness? Definition of greatness. <clears throat> definition of greatness. I love this. So, this is the best way I can explain it. I look at Mike Tyson. I look at Michael Jordan, Michael Phelps, Michael Jackson. Michelangelo. And you get these people that share a name, Michael. Just This is just me. This just could be anybody. Greatness is when you look at these people's lives and you parallel them and they never cross paths in their actual line of work and they all have one thing in common. Relentless hard work. Look at Michael Phelps. Yeah, what does he do every, every day? He swims. He masters his craft. He doesn't worry about anybody else. He worries about himself. He masters his fucking craft. And that's why he's the best Olympic gold medalist swimmer for whatever swim thing he does. I, I don't know exactly what he swims with, but I know it's the best. he puts yeah. the work in. You know what I'm saying? You look at Michael Jordan, sickening work ethic, work ethic. You know, he's great. So true greatness lies in hard work. No matter how talented you are, if you work your ass off every day, nonstop, you become great. But you just gotta believe that shit. You know, if you don't believe me, look into these great people's lives, the real greats, the real goats, and you see what they, look at the documentaries, look at their work, look at their, their passion, how they move. They have relentless hard work. I was working hard all year, what I thought I was. I met Will Smith, and uh, I think I met him, what? I took two months ago, about a month and a half ago. After the video came yeah, out, yeah, yeah. and you met. So I've been traveling the world and doing my Tarzan stuff. And I talked to uh, Will Smith, and he's like, yeah, Will Smith hasn't been home since Christmas. Working. Working. Just out there getting it. No, no, another country, another this, another project. And it's just like music video, TV show, you know, YouTube, jumping on a helicopter, you get your boys doing it. And it's like, that's the hard work. What do you think Tom Brady does in his off time? Studies, studies. Trains, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think uh, Michael Jackson did with his music? Just mastering his craft. Mastering yeah. his craft. You know what I'm saying? Just these people. Greatness lies in hard work. Mm -hmm. You're yep. talented all day. Yeah, man. Tell my little brother. My little brother is a talented young man. His name is Randy. My favorite little brother. <laughs> and uh, he's so talented, man. Just naturally talented, but. It could be a blessing and a curse, you know? Because you may not work as hard when you're talented. So I tell him, I'm like, look, kid, you're very talented, but that doesn't mean shit. I say, you're already ahead of everybody just by talent wise. I said, eventually they're gonna catch you just by talent wise. I said, imagine when you put relentless hard work on top of your already God given talent, no one will ever be able to catch you. Mm. It'll be far ahead of everybody for a long time, for forever, you know? And I tell him that at six, six years old, mm -hmm. you know, and we win five state championships in football. And then he leaves, basket, leaves football and then goes wins another four state championships in basketball. Then wins state championship in baseball. And it's just like, that's my boy. What's he doing now? He's playing basketball. He's 13 years old. Just turned 13 on, on October 12th. He's six foot one with a size 13 shoe. Ooh. He's a monster. So if you think I'm talking already, he damn near. He, I haven't yeah. seen him in like a couple of months, but Close. every time I come home and see him, he's like, taller, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's amazing, man. I love it.
Good stuff. Make sure you guys follow this guy, The Real Tarzan. Appreciate you, Mike. Thank you for having me, brother. That's great, man.